Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and with the summer TV season over and fall season quickly approaching us, it is now finally time for me to make my top 10 summer shows of 2016. Now, I would have done this a lot earlier, but like I said, because of certain shows that I had to binge, and because of me falling behind on things this year, uh, I don't really know why I fell so behind on things, but... Anyways, because of that, that's why it took me so long to finally make this video. But I know you guys don't really care about that, so let's just get right into it because I don't have a ton of shows, honestly, because I don't think this has been the greatest summer for TV. There's definitely been some gems, definitely. But when we look back at this summer compared to last summer, I just don't feel we had as many compelling shows. There definitely were some great ones. Like, there definitely were some great ones there. But there were only, like, two or three that I'd say, you know, were completely perfect and were just so game-changing and things like that. And we'll get into that. But let's just get into um, something overall. First of all, I want to talk about two shows that are not anywhere on this list. And you guys might be surprised, but neither of these shows are on the list. And that being Unreal, that's not anywhere. And Pretty Little Liars, why? Because while I wanted to put them in his honorable mentions, the seasons were not perfect enough. And, well, not, not that they weren't perfect enough. I, mean, I don't want you guys to think a show has to be perfect to be on this list because that's not what qualifies it it had a lot of problems it was a very messy season and i've been very in and out if you guys know this, i haven't reviewed pretty lives because i've been very in and out with that season um i'm gonna review it you know before the finale tonight but i've been very in and out and that's why i haven't reviewed those but now let's get to my honorable mentions which i have three honorable mentions um all three of these shows i think are really great they just didn't end up on this list the first one being one that I've never reviewed a single episode of on this show, because, on the, I mean, on this channel, um, because I just haven't, you know, I, I just don't feel I have much to talk about, and that is the season of America's Got Talent. I used to watch America's Got Talent uh, a couple years ago, and I kind of just stopped watching it because of other things, just life and things like that got in the way, but when I heard that Simon Cowell was going to be on this season... I became much more interested, and it's actually been pretty good. I feel like the talent's been really good this season. I think the panel's been a lot of fun to watch, and I think Nick Cannon's always great. I've always liked him as a host, and it's just the definition of a fun summer reality show. I don't like a lot of these reality series, but this is one that I can watch, and it's fun to watch, and... I really am enjoying it overall, so America's Got Talent, not going to put my top 10, but that is an honorable mention. The second one being Dead of Summer, and yes, I am still watching the show. I know I haven't reviewed anything, but I am going to review the entire season, most likely tonight. Uh, this show has been so surprising. I was expecting this to be a very cheesy summer show that I'd stop watching after three episodes. That actually ended up being Guilt. That was the show I stopped watching. Dead of Summer, I continued watching, and you know what? The more it went on, the more it got better. It's very character focused it also is very creepy at times and generally has shocked me with its kills with its reveals i mean i really have loved every i really loved dead of summer i hope it comes back for season two because i really enjoyed it overall and i like that it's an anthology series as well i think they've done that really well and then the third one being wayward pines and yes i know you guys may be surprised about this but it's the definition of a fun summer series. It really is. I mean, was Wayward Pines always perfect? No, but it kept me thoroughly interested throughout the whole time. I really was interested in what was going on. Wasn't the best show in the world, but I don't know if it's come back for season three, but season two was a lot of fun. I definitely did enjoy it overall, and uh, like I said, those three are my honorable mentions. They didn't make the list, but now let's get to the stuff that did make my list, starting off with number ten. So once again at number 10, we have a show that I thought was going to be complete shit. I remember when I saw promos for this, and I just didn't think it was going to be that great. I thought it was going to be really stupid and really dumb. Little did I know how self-aware and really just awesome and great it would be, and that is Brain Dead. Yes, this is a show that I am still watching. I know I kind of went, I've been in and out with it, but I am still watching Brain Dead, and I really do love this show. I think it's different. I think it's quirky i think it's really weird but that's what works so well in this show it's very different there's really nothing like this i think you'd see on tv i mean i honestly have not seen a show quite like brain dead you know it's it mixes something like bugs going in people's brains with politics and it just does it so so well and i think they did that balance very well this season i really did enjoy it overall yes the season hasn't ended yet it's 13 episodes i don't know why it's 13 episodes but it is and then mary elizabeth winston i mean this really has been the year for her between this and 10 chlorofield lane i think she's really showing a range i think she's really showing how great of an actress she really is and very happy that she had a leading role here 
Aaron Tveit's been great here. Tony Shalhoub. I mean, he's been killing it every episode. I think really the entire cast is great. I've really loved everyone on this show. And then the recap songs, I mean, I could talk about those all day. Those just get stuck in your head, and they're awesome. I mean, I find myself singing some of those recap songs. I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I'll just start singing them because they're so damn catchy, and that's something I really did love about this show, and I love that it never takes itself too seriously. You know, sometimes it does have to be serious, but when it comes to the bug thing, it never takes itself too seriously. It did follow through on revealing these things to you and never really felt underwhelming. Brain Dead, that is why it's number 10. One of the biggest surprises this summer by far, and something that if you aren't watching it, it's not for everyone, but if you want a really fun, cheesy, over-the-top summer show that knows what it is and is very self-aware and also has very good acting, Brain Dead is definitely a show for you and that is why it is at number 10. So coming in at number 9 we have a show that I was definitely looking forward to in the summer. I thought that this was definitely going to be one of the best shows of summer 2016. It absolutely was, and that is Preacher. Preacher, um, I actually really did love. I know a lot of people are very underwhelmed by this season. I'm someone that didn't read the comics, so I didn't really have many expectations going into this other than the trailers of the show. The trailers look awesome, and the show in general I thought was awesome because unlike The Walking Dead and unlike Fear the Walking Dead, this is a show that, like Brain Dead, doesn't take itself too seriously. It knows when to be ridiculous and fun, but it also does have those sad moments, and it also, I think, built up the character of Jesse Custer really well. With the ten first 10 episodes kind of serving as a prologue, I thought they did it pretty well. Yes, sometimes it dragged a little bit, but it was investing the whole way through. I really like the characters, especially our main three, you know, Jesse, Cassidy, Tulip. I could watch a whole show about just those three talking and it would be awesome. I think they were some of the best characters we've had this summer. I had a lot of fun with this show. I thought that the concept of it was very original. It's not really something we've had before, and I like that it wasn't just vampires and world. There was more to it. They really expanded the world and really made me even more invested for season two once that comes along. But if you haven't seen Preacher, definitely check it out, especially if you like really quirky type of horror shows and things that are just a little bit different, and you're looking for something that's not exactly like the other ones, I think Preacher definitely is a show for you, and that is why it is at number 9. So at number 8, we have something that I honestly forgot was on this summer because it was so early in the summer, but it still was a summer show, because to me, the summer show started in May, just like the movie started in May, and this was throughout all of May and all of June, and then part of July, and that, of course, was season 2 of Outlander. I know you guys are going to be like, why is this on your list? This started in April. Well, like like I said, most of it was May, June, and July, and this season I thought was great. I really still do love the season of Outlander. I think it was a fantastic season overall. I think the writing was even better this season. I think they really expanded the characters, especially Jamie and Claire's relationship. They really went into that relationship, showing the ins and outs, showing how these two, you know, function together, and how much they love each other, and just showing Claire kind of starting to forget about Frank and things like that. I think they also did the war stuff very well. That stuff was very well incorporated. And the fact this season, they took so many chances. I mean, I don't want to spoil exactly what they did, but I am gonna, I'm going to throw the spoiler right here. I mean, just the fact that the last episode, they take a th three-year time jump and basically completely... Uh, you know, change, change the world completely. I thought it was very, you know, they completely changed the landscape of Outlander. It really makes me very, you know, makes season three very uh, unpredictable. I have no idea what's going to happen this season, and I am very excited about that. But season two was different. It was daring. It was much more confident, and that is why season two Outlander is definitely on here. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. If you love season one, I think you're going to love season two just as much. Did it give everything the book readers wanted? No, I, had, I saw a lot more book readers complain, but if you don't read the books, I think you'll be a lot better. That's why I personally don't read the books for the show either, because I just want to be more surprised. I think I'll like the show more, and that is absolutely the case. I love the season of Outlander. I thought it was fantastic, and really was, I think, better than season one, but if you guys have seen out, haven't seen Outlander seen two, check it out now. It's an amazing show, and that is why it is at number eight. Coming in at number seven, we have a show that really flew under the radar last year, and I did stop watching last year just because other things got in the way, but this season, I'm like, no, I am not going to do that. I'm going to watch the whole season through, and thank God I did because number seven is the second season of Casual. Guys, this show really surprised me. I mean, season one, I thought was a really great show, but it was like kind of other shows I've seen. I did see other shows like Casual before. 
But, nevertheless, I saw the potential it had, and I thought Season 1 was a great season, wasn't bad, but the way they ended things, I was a bit worried about with Season 2. Season 2 pretty much fixed all that. I thought the characters were more interesting, I thought the storylines were more interesting, and they really got us to sympathize with these characters more. Yes, these characters are making bad decisions at points, but they're not really supposed to be the most, um, you know, they don't really think things through, and they're not really someone who is always on top of things, and I thought that was something that they showed very well here. I really did love Casual overall. I thought it was a fantastic show. I thought this season in particular was even better than, um, season one. There were so many great things about it, and I just thought that, you know, it's one of those shows where I don't think a lot of people watch it, unfortunately, but it really does show the potential that Hulu has. Hulu really is trying to expand their programming, and I think Casual is a very good example of that, giving them more stuff to deal with, giving more, throwing more characters in the mix, and I think just really showing the way these three characters handle the relationship. Is it possible for them to go beyond a casual relationship? That's one of the biggest points of this season, and I think it's something this season delivered very well, and it's a great question that this season had, and it ended in a very satisfying way, with hopefully season 3 being a lot more hopeful and a lot less depressing, because this was a pretty depressing season, but either way, Casual, amazing show, I think it's one of Hulu's best, and if you guys haven't seen Casual, check it out now, because it really is fantastic, and that is why it's me number 7. Now, number 6, we have something that originally was way, way higher, like, I was expecting this to be, like, number 3, or number two, but because of other shows and me getting much more interested in these other shows, this show just became a little bit lower. I still do love this show, don't get me wrong, but it was just lower, and that is another great show from Cinemax, Outcast. Another show that I don't think a ton of people watch this year, and I'm kind of disappointed about because it definitely was one of the best shows I've seen from Cinemax. I really like the way that Cinemax is trying to improve their content. They're really trying to give something, something to everyone. You know, you have The Nick, and now you have Outcast, and Outcast was just... It's not your standard possession show. That's what I love about it. This is not a they solve the kind of possession show. It's not that kind of show where they're just exercising people, which, yes, they did do that, but they were all for personal reasons, and... What I love the most about Outcast is that they all had to do with Kyle Barnes and how Kyle was connected to all this and really getting into his history and seeing how he's dealt with exorcisms in the past and really trying to get us to get behind his character, show why he is the man he is today, but also show that he's not a bad guy, and that's something I think they did very well, and also get us to like the character of Reverend Anderson. Those two characters in general are enough to like this show. I mean, you have two of the best performances of the entire year, in my opinion, in this show, between Philip Glenchester and, you know, um... Uh, what's the, what's the guy's name that plays Kyle? I can't think of his name right now. But they both gave amazing performances. I thought they both were fantastic in this show. They're enough a reason to like it. But then you have the horror elements and the creepiness of it and just the downright depressing nature because it is kind of depressing at points what they do and they take what could be your standard horror show that's very been there done that and they make it original and when a show does that and finds a way to impress me and make something that seems like oh i've seen this all before and somehow make it original i have to give props to it and that is why outcast is as good as it is if you aren't seeing it definitely check it out I would never be able to watch this show if it wouldn't be for things like F movies or, you know, sh things like that where you're able to get shows because I don't have Cinemax. But I can't help but watch these shows because they're getting so interesting. They're getting so good. I love what Cinemax is doing. If you guys don't have Cinemax, I'd say just watch it online. You'll probably be able to find it online somewhere. If you haven't seen Outcast, check it out because you've really done yourself a disservice this summer. It's one of the most interesting, compelling, and thought-provoking shows this summer. And I absolutely recommend you watch Outcast. I can't wait for season two. And that is why it is my number six. Now, despite all of these shows, one thing I think is for sure, that the king of this summer, without a doubt, was Netflix. Netflix, in my opinion, I think had the greatest summer they might have had. I mean, this has been an incredible year for them, just getting out tons of content, having so much different variety of content, and having so many people watch their shows. I mean, I think this has been the most uh, shows Netflix has had all year, and a great testament of that, without a doubt, is number five, which is Stranger Things. This show is just incredible. I mean, this show 
is just it, it got under it gets under your skin it's compelling and it's so binge worthy i mean it's such it's just one of those shows that goes by so fast and it's so interesting throughout the whole way through and it's creepy and it's it also is a great character series though i mean there are really just so many great things about stranger things between the characters which are also interesting and i think they handled all so well and every single one you really do get into even if you start out not liking one by the end of this show you really do sympathize with all these characters and then you have you know the effects here which aren't supposed to be the best they're supposed to be average because it is supposed to be like an 80s based show and then you have that time period of the 80s and they utilize it so well you feel like you're right back in the 80s you feel like this is something you could watch in the 80s and that's something they did so well with this show and like i said by far the best thing about the show is millie bobby brown is 11 if you haven't seen the show watch it alone for her i mean you have never seen something quite like this i've never really seen a child perform uh performance quite like millie bobby brown for but she really did slay in that role, as well as Renault Ryder, as well as David Harbour, as well as the entire cast, man, just add, they all really did a great job. It's also a show, I think, that represents grief very well, it represents, um, I think, uh, redemption and revenge very well, and also how the characters deal with the situation that they're dealing with, and I definitely really did like that. It could have been very much like The Leftovers or things like that, but it found a way to make a concept original, and I love the way it did that, and even though people said it is recycling things from other shows, it still keeps it original, it's its own story, and the Duffer Brothers told the story they wanted to through, and it honestly doesn't need a season two. I'd love it to get a season two, but it's a show where it's so satisfying that if it didn't get a season two, I would feel just as satisfied as I did as it ended because I feel it ends in a very ambiguous way and I feel that that might just be the way to end it but anyway Stranger Things I'm sure you've seen it because everyone I've talked to has seen I mean I haven't seen a single person that hasn't seen Stranger Things I mean it's Netflix's most popular show right now if you haven't seen it just watch it right now it's so bingeable um I got my parents to watch it they loved it and uh Number five, without a doubt, is Stranger Things. Just watch the show. Absolutely love it. And that is why it is my number five. Continuing with the Netflix shows, we go to number four, which is something that I, a show that I've always loved, but I've never put in my top ten or e anything, really. I don't think I've ever really had the show in my top tens, mainly because as much as I love this show, I think they haven't exactly given me what I want, and they haven't delivered as perfect of a season as this one, and that, of course, is season four of Orange New Black. Damn, this surprised me. I mean, I remember when I heard that they were going dark, I thought it was a sign that this show is kind of starting to jump the shark. I thought it was going to be a bad thing that they were going too dark because I just thought that it was going to get ultra dark. There wasn't going to be a mix. And finally, this season, they had that perfect mix of comedy and drama. And I thought they did that so, so well this season. I mean, it was really, really dramatic, but also really funny at points. And I thought those storylines were really great. This season being a lot more, you know, last season was a lot more character-based. This season is definitely a lot more plot-based, showing how, you know, corrupt uh, the system can be. And I think how you need to stand up for what you believe in. Just these great messages that really just work so well in the show. And especially, of course, when the major death happens, which I'm not going to say what happens, but when that major death does happen, it really does change everything we've known about the show. I mean, life at Litchfield will never be the same next season. And that's what makes me so pumped for next season. I've never wanted to see Season Orange New Black more than I have at the end of Season 4. I mean, I felt very satisfied. Definitely will say I felt very satisfied. I felt very much like, you know... I need um, season five. I, I felt very satisfied. I felt a lot of closure, but I definitely need to feel like I need season five right now. I just need to know who die is shot. I need to know what happened with that. But anyways, I know I just spoiled that. Uh, but if you guys haven't seen Orange New Black season four, check it out right now. It's an incredible show, and I'd love to. Uh, it's an incredible show. If you've seen seasons one to three, I think you'll love season four the most. I've heard most people say it's the best season. I completely agree. It is the best season. It has the best flashbacks. It has the best character moments, and it has, I think, the most graphic and and violent stuff to date, but that doesn't mean that it ever goes too far. It focuses on the subject, it sticks with that concept, and it runs with it, and it makes it that much more interesting by going into where it does. You don't expect it to go where it does, but once it does, you are completely riveted, you are completely hyped up, and it makes you not wait for it, not be able to wait for season five, and that is why Orange New Black is my number four. 
However, between all the Netflix shows and as good as they were, I don't think anyone had a better summer on Netflix than BoJack Horseman. I mean, this season, just wow. I mean, this season is, is it's incredible. It's a masterpiece. It really is. All three of these seasons are a masterpiece. But BoJack Horseman, I think this is the show that really grew a bigger audience this year. I mean, I remember people talked about it in seasons one and two, definitely. But because of how good season two was, that garnered a lot of viewers this season and that's definitely shown here I mean this is a season that took a lot more chances they did an episode where it's entirely underwater and there's barely any dialogue they did an episode where it's mainly just a telephone conversation for 23 minutes but it's all so riveting you can't every time the show comes on I mean you know when it's gonna get dark you know what's gonna happen but every time it gets dark it always surprises you and that's something I absolutely loved about this show is even when you think it's coming, you don't really know when it's going to get dark. You don't really realize how dark it's going to get and how far it's going to go with that concept. And damn, did it go far this year. I mean, it was depressing, but it stayed a show that's so interesting and so bingeable and so just just compelling to watch and I love that I mean this season three I'm not just bragging about because it got me like the most views ever I'm not just bragging about that because my reviews got me the most views ever which is awesome but in general I thought this was an incredible season I thought they really gave every character something great to do but especially Bojack I mean we really Bojack's life really went from 80 to zero and I don't really know where it's gonna go in season four season four probably should be the last season but even if it's not I feel like the writers have something up their sleeves that I don't see coming at all i definitely didn't see this show coming i mean when we thought season two couldn't get any darker season three got even darker and i think season four you could be even darker possibly but we'll have to happens with that bojack horseman season three if you haven't seen it check it out if you haven't seen the show in general i can understand if you didn't like it in the first four episodes but once it gets great it gets really fucking great and especially this season this season really show what potential it has and if you guys haven't seen bojack horseman check it out that is and it was it was compelling it was sad it was hilarious Hilarious. It's one of the funniest shows on TV. It's also one of the most tragic shows on TV. And that bounce alone is why it is my number three. Number two and number one were very, very close together. In fact, I'm not going to lie. For a while, I really couldn't figure out which show I liked more. I mean, both of these shows are just so great. And they delivered so much this season. And they both were just so damn interesting. And they never lost me. I was interested throughout the whole time. They were the two shows I thought about the most. But when it really comes down to it, I put this at number two and this at number one just because of the way that it was done. And I'll explain why. But number two is the reason why this top ten list took so long. The reason why I, you know, um waited so you know waited so long on this because i knew i could not make this top 10 list without watching the night of and that is why it is my number two i mean this show came out of nowhere it really did i mean i remember i saw promos for this i thought it was gonna be like a horror show they advertised it like it was gonna be some show about a kid that had a secret and it wasn't that at all it was so different than what i thought it could be and that's what i loved about the show is that it seems like a very been there done that seems like kind of like an american crime story or something like that but it's not that at all because it's not really about the case. It's about the people involved with the case and how this affects their life and how they go about their lives with this. It shows how the prison system works. It shows how flawed the criminal justice system is. And that's something the show just did so well. It has by far one of the best ensemble casts I've seen in any miniseries in a very long time. And in general, it's one of the most compelling miniseries. It's a show that never ever lost me. I didn't think there was a single dud in this season. I thought everything was so interesting. You have three of the best performances in the show from Riz Ahmed, who is going to be a star if he's not a star already. John Turturro, who he made his comeback in this season. There is a scene at the end of episode eight where he is giving a closing argument, and that alone is enough of a reason for him to win an Emmy. And Michael K. Williams, who also gave an amazing performance, even though he didn't have a ton of stuff to do. He still had amazing stuff in this show, and I really did uh, love everything they did in this show. And uh, something I forgot to say is that I really think this show is going to get tons of awards. It's become so Emmy-worthy, and I really hope that even though it does become Emmy-worthy, and even though it's gotten all this critical response, I don't want to get a season two. I think it works perfectly as a standalone eight-episode series. If you haven't seen The Night Of, it is so bingeable. It is so interesting throughout the whole way through, and you'll probably get through it very quickly. Even episodes that the like the ones that were 90 minutes and the finale, which I believe was like 100 and something, 
something minutes. They feel like 20 minutes to me. I was into them the whole time. I thought they were so interesting. I really just love getting into this world of Rikers, one of the worst prisons you could ever go to, and seeing how someone could possibly survive in there, I thought was so interesting. There's so much great stuff about the show, and I don't want, I could talk about it all day, honestly. I could just, I could just keep praising and gushing about this, but I'm not going to because I have to get to number one. But number two is The Night of, which by the way, I picked it number two because it is a miniseries, and that's the only reason why it's, because it, it's a miniseries and it's not an actual series. It's technically a miniseries, but if you guys haven't seen an item, check it out now. Amazing stuff. Absolutely recommend it, and that is why it is number two. Number one, I think, is pretty obvious at this point. I think you guys kind of could guess what my number one would be. You probably thought it was The Night Of, but if you didn't think that, you probably knew my number one is. And number one is a show that I thought was going to go through a sophomore slump. I really did. I didn't think the show was going to be as good as Season 1. Little did I know it would take so many more chances, and in my opinion, be better than Season 1. And that, of course, is Season 2 of Mr. Robot. I seem to be the only person that feels this show is just as great as it is in Season 1. I heard a lot of people say, this season's not as good, or it's going through a sophomore slump. I would completely disagree. What I would say this season is that Sam Esmol just doesn't care what you think of his television. He wants to do what he wants to do, and that's when you know you have a great writer. When he takes chances, like, has 20 minutes an entire of an episode where it's just a sitcom, and you don't know what the hell's going on. Or last week, where he did the Darlene-centric episode. That's how you know he's much more confident. He knows, you know, that we are predicting what's going to happen constantly. And the way that he keeps changing things up and going against our predictions, that's what makes the show so great. I can never predict what's going to happen on this show. It's such an unpredictable show, and I really do love that. And I love this season. It's more of an ensemble show. You know, you're really getting into every character. You're seeing their motive. You're seeing their everyday life. You're seeing who they are in the real world and... Something that was so well done. And of course, the twist in Season 2. I'm not going to spoil it, but there is a huge uh, monumental twist at the end of Season 2 that you may have guessed, but it still makes it that much more compelling. I don't really care that I guessed it. I think it still was very well crafted. You have some of the best performances here. Rami Malik, of course, you know, just slain it as always. Christian Slater, I think, is even better this season. He really is fantastic. I think the two most surprise, the two most, I think, uh, under the radar performances in season one, they're giving even better performances in season two. Carly Chaikin and Portia Doubleday. This is absolutely their season. I mean, they are just dominating it. As good as Rami Malik is, he's fantastic. Carly Chaikin and Portia Doubleday are just, are, they're just surprising me every episode with what they can do, the range they have. Craig Robinson, the show, oh my god, I mean, if he does not get, like I said, an Emmy for Best Guest Actor, I don't know what I'm gonna do because he was incredible here, as well as, um, bad, as well as, um, Joey Badass, he's been incredible here. Just the entire cast in general, one of the best casts on TV, one of the best shows on TV by far, it remains one of the best shows on TV, it ran with a narrative and, and it went with with it. It was, it's been different than season one. It's longer than season one. And in my opinion, it's even more compelling than season one. And it really made it just, and everything they've done this season has, season one, I think served as a great prologue. Season two is where the real season has started. There's a lot of stuff going on. It is starting to all connect. Everything is getting so interesting. It's going with this plots of the uh, second depression and showing what actually could happen if it did. It's one of the most realistic it's one of the most, um, you know, acclaimed and one of the most different shows on TV. If you aren't seeing Mr. Robot, you're doing yourself a big disservice. It is one of the best shows on TV. It's not for everyone. Definitely, it's not for everyone. But I think if you like different things, especially if you like The Leftover Season 2, that's the best way I can recommend it. That very much reminds me of The Leftover Season 2 and what they did with that. But you guys haven't seen Mr. Robot Season 2, check it out. It's amazing. It was fantastic. It just beat Night Of by a smidge. I'm not going to say it's better. It might not be better than Night Of, but I think it definitely is just as good. Those two are very much, like I said, deadlocked, and I think Mr. Robot seems really built upon it, and that is why it is my number one. But anyways, guys, that's it. Summer 2016 is now over. I can't believe it. This summer has flown by. I honestly am shocked that we're at the point where summer's over. I, I can't believe that summer's actually over, but it is. And with that TV goes, I mean, yeah, there are still some shows that are still going on. Like I said, Mr. Robot's still going on. Brain Dead's still going on. But most of them did conclude. And, of course, I couldn't end August without making this list 
But anyways, guys, let me know what you guys saw this list. Let me know if I left anything off the list. And if you guys have any recommendations for me of shows I didn't watch this summer and you guys want me to continue watching them, just drop, you know, uh, drop me a comment because I've heard people say, oh, Animal Kingdom got better. I want to watch Animal Kingdom. I didn't get a chance to. Queen of the South got better. Maybe I'll watch that next year. You know, there are some shows that I just kind of fell behind with. And if I did fall behind with the show, I do apologize for that. But just like I said, leave me a comment. Um, let me know what you think of my top 10. Do you agree with what I said? Have you seen any of these shows? And if you have, what do you think of these shows? But that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And with summer over, I will be making my fall video very soon. That should be um, t tomorrow. Not today. I'm going to do that tomorrow. But I will. But my next video will be for Pretty Liars. I know I have three episodes to review. I will review the, the two episodes, and then I will review the third one tonight. And I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.